how are you doing today? It's another Friday Sews. Friday Sews is where we all come together, all of us sewists, whether you're actually doing and performing the vlog or the YouTube content, or if you're just participating. So please participate in my YouTube uh, by commenting and subscribing. Okay, welcome back. So the format for YouTube is talking about what you sewed, what you've been doing, and what you're gonna do going forward. And I'm gonna do that right now. So one of the first things I've sewn is this tank top. And here's a little extra detail I added. Now, if you have been listening and watching my channel, you know that I did a book review on the Head of the Curve book, which is a, excuse me, I'm getting it. It's a cashmere book, and this is what it looks like. And I've made a couple of renditions of this Curso top, and I was still trying to get the fit just right. And in the meantime, I wanted to do a sew the look, and I'll show you a picture here. And so, this is what I was making as my twall, my trial garment for the sew the look. Because that sew the look did have some gathering here on the shoulder such as this. So this came out a little big and I did have to add some shaping in the back. So I just took in the seam allowance a little bit more to allow some shaping. I lined it in a thin cotton, rubber cotton uh, voile. And it has a little bit more give than the outer fabric. So if I had to do it again, I would make it even smaller. In other words, the lining fabric a little smaller because it does want to peep out a little bit. But other than that, I'm real happy with it. I did a machine hem, blind hem, and as you can see, I had the setting such that the stitches actually show. But you know what, I kind of like it, because I kind of think it looks a little bit couture, you know, versus just a straight seam like the, um, the garment factories use. So I kind of like that. So that was my first sew. Well, apparently the hot topic in the news this day is the hot weather. <laughs> <laughs> it is all over the world, right? Except for maybe Australia. <laughs> um, and you know, we have been um, influenced by that ourselves. So it's a good time to show you my next make. I had purchased some Robert Kaufman Nirvana gauze off of fabric.com, which is the Amazon site. And for that, I decided I would use a woven t-shirt pattern. Well, I didn't have one yet. Um, and so I chose the Harmony blouse by Love Notions. I did not get it on sale. I didn't think about it till later, but they're still not that expensive. And Love, Motion, Love Notions, I'm really becoming more and more of a fan of as I compare them to other um, pattern companies. They are just so user-friendly, so user-friendly, just, takes all the frustration out of just all of it. The, the getting the pattern purchased and printed and cut and the sizing and then the actual making and then they give you examples, like they have a little gallery. And she's so consistent. Like when you get, you get three files when you purchase a Love Notions pattern. And the first file is your print at home and your instructions, they're together. And then you get a projector and then you get your AO, which is your copy shop. I have to say copy shop because it always sounds like coffee shop. <laughs> but anyway, um, she's just so user friendly. So this is my, excuse me, reach. This is the toile. Now I had hoped that this toile would be a wearable toile, but I don't think it is. Um, the finishing is bias tape. And I had my own in my stash and it was a little bigger than what it was called for. And so it kind of 
pops out a little bit. And then the other thing is that I did not know the fiber content of this. It is not yarn dyed, it's just printed on there. And I assumed it was cotton. But now that I've worked with it, I think it has a lot of polyester in it. Like for example, one thing was that when I was sewing it, like my needle was going like ting, 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 ting. And so of course I changed it and oiled my machine and all that. And it still went ting, 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 ting. So I think it was punching through that polyester. And if I had to do it again, I would have used a Microtex needle, but it just never even occurred to me at the time because it just didn't seem like I needed that. And um, again, it doesn't have a lot of like mechanical give, which I think is another maybe indication it's polyester. And it just, like my seams just aren't pretty. I mean, that's all there is to it. They're just not. And my machine makes pretty stitches. So, you know, it's just, I think it's the fabric. So I have not hemmed it. I don't know how much I'll wear it, but you know, it's not the worst thing that anyone's ever seen in the world. <laughs> so, but it was a good, um, a successful twall in the sense that I figured out the sizing and the technique and how I wanted to do the next one. Now I have not sewn with double gauze very much. I think I've done two other garments, one which was a gift and the other one I don't have anymore. It was um, like pajama tops. But um, because of that, I didn't want to get too adventurous on my pattern. I didn't want to have a lot of bias because, you know, obviously fabric is more unstable on the bias. And so that's why I did this simple top. And of course, I'll show you pictures with me in it. But because of my first rendition, the the pad, uh, the collar popped out a little bit. I was very careful and I actually used store-bought this time. And you know what? It's pretty nice. I, I guess I always feel like store-bought is just so crisp. Like I feel like they use quilting cotton when they make it versus something thinner, like a even a Batiste, you know, or a poplin that's not quilting. But anyway, it worked out good. And uh, my finishings, I used a serger. Now, I am really solidifying my technique, my practice of that when I am overlocking for just a woven fabric where I'm just finishing the edge, I'm not actually constructing a garment with it. You know, you don't need any strength. You're just making the edges look pretty. I definitely am going to a three thread narrow because like for example, on this pattern, the seam allowances were three eighths. And so you don't have a lot of room to then press open your seams if you're gonna do, you know, do a real wide serger. Now, the other thing I did end up doing, um, and I did, again, I'm always really uncertain whether I should use a full bust adjustment or just go for the regular bust. And if I had to do it again, I probably would do regular bust. But when you do a full bust, you also add to the waist. And so I took that back out um, by creating a, a, a pleat in the front that was not there. And then the other adjustment I made is I lowered the dart bust and I didn't need to. So it's just so weird. I'm making all these adjustments I don't need to make. I mean, it's not the first time I've done that. As a matter of fact, I even lengthened it because again, I'm 5'10 and I don't even think I needed to do that. So the other thing I did do though, is that it has a slight t-shirt hem. And so, um, or I guess you'd call that, well, you know, a shirt, a curved hem. And so in the front, I straightened it out a little bit because I like my front of my garments to hit about at the high hip. Um, and I like the back to be kind of at the low hip. So a little bit of a low high um, situation. So that's a good make. And I can't wear it, wait to wear it now that I've shown it to you in this hot weather. The last make I'm gonna show you this Friday is I have finished this little jacket. And would you believe I had the most perfect little buttons? Doesn't that look great? Yeah, so this is, and I did a little label from Aunt Kathy. So this is for a great niece that's gonna, or nephew, excuse me, that's going to be born any day now. I'm trying to show you the inside. <laughs> That's what the inside looks. I can't get the buttons on, but I always use so much of that stitch witchery on my buttonholes. They're kind of crisp for a while. <laughs> Not a good thing for children, right? But I'm thinking he'll get in this about the time he learns to walk. 
So I think it's kind of fun when you're having a baby to have a few things that are in the closet just waiting to be used. And that's the lining, and it's a stretch lining. And I, I showed you a little bit of this last Friday, I believe. So that's what I have been sewing. Okay, so the next section is what have I been doing? Well, if you watched last week, you know that I was busy with the grandkids. Oh my goodness, three children, four, you know, the span of four years, ages three, five, and seven. It's pretty tiring. <laughs> I can see now why I'm on. So anyway, they, um, the kids did great though. We took them to, um, a place called Great Wolf Lodge and it's just meant for children. It has all kinds of activities for the kids. And then they also had these water slides, like a big water park. Oh my goodness, the volume of that place. <laughs> Between, even if no children were in it, the water just crashing down, you know, four stories is quite noisy. And then you're trying to not lose a child, which don't tell anyone, but we lost one for a little while. And, um, so anyway, it was, it was quite the scene. And then we took them over to an amusement park and our daughter went with us. So we had one-on-one -on -one child care. <laughs> we all, <laughs> and then we did this thing, we called it mustering, you know, how, because their parents were on a cruise and you know how you muster on a cruise to like get your assignment and you know, your safety stuff. So we would do musters to like, make sure we were all in the same, you know, place on, our expectations and who had which child and so forth. And then the kids would grab, go together and they'd go muster and they'd like squirt mustard in the air. Of course, we didn't tell them it was a, really a different name, <laughs> a different word. But um, anyway, they did real good at the amusement park and it was super fun and super hot. <laughs> so it was a great trip and it's good to be back and kind of get my house back in order and um, get my life back in order, my sewing back in order, my social life back in order. Yeah, so that's where we are with what I have been doing. Um, the good thing is, is sewing wise, the kids make pretty, they wear pretty much of the stuff I make. There was one pair of pants that the little guy was wearing that I made um, out of the Essex linen. I'm pausing because I'm like, is it the Essex? It's the Robert Kaufman linen, yeah, I think it's the Essex, that does not have any viscose in it. And I've had a garment out of it and it's fine for me, but for the little guys, like it comes out of the dryer really wrinkled and that's just not practical for their busy lifestyle to have little boy pants coming out of the dryer wrinkled. So I'm not gonna make it up for the other little boy. Um, and I, the only reason I was making it was just to be a stash buster. So I'll just figure out something else to use with that linen. You know, it's heavy enough. I could probably do um, a craft, you know? So I'll just do something. Okay, so the first thing going forward and a fabric purchase at the same time is I wanna show you that this product here. So I kinda had deduced by watching YouTube channels that frequently people use that when they pre-wash their fabric to just cut, uh, catch the residual dyes from the fabrics. And so I used it and I'm gonna show you my, first of all, this was white and this is how much color my fabric bled. So that's gonna give you a hint of what's gonna happen here. So this is the fabric. It is a denim with no stretch that I obtained from Joanne. Now I wanted to obtain a higher quality denim, but I could not find that color anywhere else. And it says it's vegetable dye. And so whatever vegetable that is, it just sits on top of the fabric and it doesn't really seep all the way into it. But you know, that's okay. Um, yeah, I, because it's gonna work out. But anyway, I bought that fabric, so I washed it four times. So I showed you the first color sheet. This is the second one. Then I would dry it and I use dryer balls and I also use vinegar to soften fabric. So I was using both of those natural products. And this fabric ball was white. So this came out of the, our dryer ball. So it came out of the dryer, still bleeding fabric. So the next time I thought the heck with it, I'm just gonna put a towel in the washer. This was a rag that was white. It is now pink. But the good news is that although I don't know when I'll get to the point where I wash this without by you know without being by itself or with red clothing 
I do like the fabric and I like it when fabric gets some like little lines on it from the washing machine. I think that looks kind of, I don't know. I just like the texture it gives. And then I also bought this, and this is going to be a pocket lining. It's a polyester fabric and I am making, I'm looking around because I had a little picture. What I'm making with that, and it's fresh on my sewing table right now, is the glissando shorts. And I'm gonna use um, a, a, a zipper fly. So I am changing that. And I've twalled them, but I'm still a little, little not sure what size I should use. I find it takes me three times to nail a size. And um, I have a little bit of that body dysmorphic where I think I'm a little bigger than I really am. I mean, I am big. So that's why I think I'm big, <laughs> but I'm not as big as I think I am or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm having a little trouble deciding, but I'll give you the update on that next week, hopefully. Um, another purchase I made that I alluded to was that IC fabric, which I now have a fabric code for. And just, it's just sewing practice. My sewing practice is the code and I'll write it down. But anyway, I ordered their um, sample pack and it's really a good sample pack. Um, again, that's what they are. So the first one is their waffle. It's 100% cotton and organic. It's in this beautiful chocolate brown. Now, I just told them that I was interested in warm colors. I wrote that in the memo. And um, they, you know, so they'll send you whatever color you want, but I didn't specify colors. But anyway, I saw someone had a cardigan I can't remember if someone sewed it up or if I saw it in a ready to wear. But anyway, someone made a cardigan out of this fabric and I'm like, yes, I'm doing that. That looks great. And then this is just their mid-weight linen. You've seen that. Now they have two, what I call French terries, like a loop back. And then the one that has the spandex is thinner and obviously stretchier. So, I mean, you could really use this for a top. It wouldn't have to be a cardigan. And this would be more like a sweatshirt. It's less stretchy, no spandex, and it presents a little more thick. And that one's just called French Terry and the other one's called spandex. Then they have this lovely rib. Again, I can remember wearing these kind of ribs when I was younger. It would make it just a beautiful turtleneck or a t-shirt. And then the last two I'm saving and I'm gonna show you together. Cause I have a, a ready to wear t-shirt that I've had for a long time that I really thought was a nice t-shirt. And first of all, it was out of the slub. And you know, you just can't really find slub a whole lot out in the fabric world. And this is a slub. This particular color is called um, sunflower. And I won't necessarily do it in these colors, but just stay with me here. And then they have a nice rib, which is just your, probably your two by two rib. And what my t-shirt has is they have the rib on the side panel. And I just like the way that if you did it in the same color, just adds a little extra texture. And then I'm thinking I could use this for the neck. And if I make it long sleeve, I can also use it for the cuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think that might be a, a nice little, nice little idea going forward. Okay, so the last thing I have to show you, and I just misplaced it. What did I cover it with the fabric? Okay. So when I cut things out, I use rulers and a rotary cutter and a mat. So, well, my cutting table is a mat. But anyway, I put rulers next to my blade to keep it from slipping and just to like compress the fabric a little bit more so I get a truer cut. So I do a lot of that. So I use a French ruler every single day, I sew. And apparently you cannot drop them on the floor. But no problem, I have a local Joanne, right? I just go buy another one. Well, apparently you cannot drop the second one on the floor either. <laughs> These are not supposed to be consumables. <laughs> this is not like a needle where you have to replace it every time. <laughs> so I decided to buy a metal one. <laughs> so that's my other fun purchase. Okay, well, I hope you have a great week and go out there and see what all the other Friday shows um, ladies are and gentlemen are putting out there this week. And I'll see you, I'm going to see you Sunday because I post every Friday and Sunday. And um, I'll see you soon.